Starting chemical reactions can be very overwhelming at the beginning. Here what we're going to do is we're going to go through and look at what you start with and how that implicates what type of reaction you might have and what products you'll form. So the goal of this is by the end that just by looking at the reactants you can come up with what the products are. So to do that we're going to go through a couple different scenarios. The first one is if you mix an element with an element, what will happen? So in that event, you're going to be ending up with a synthesis reaction, which is where you start with two things and end with one. So in this case, we're starting with two elements, we're going to end up with a compound. Now, what type of compound you end up with depends on the elements. So if you start with a non-metal and a non-metal, okay, so if we start with hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas, then we're going to produce a molecular compound. And molecular compounds are difficult in the fact that you can't always predict what the formula will be. There are often many of them. So if I told you you're mixing sulfur and oxygen, there are multiple, there are multiple possibilities to form. If I told you you're mixing phosphorus and oxygen, there are multiple possibilities you could form. Nitrogen and oxygen, there are multiple possibilities. So for hydrogen and oxygen, we can pretty much safely predict that we're going to make water. And the water will be from combustion, so it'll be in the gaseous state. And then we can go ahead and balance it. But otherwise, very frequently, you're going to need to be told what you're going to make. So, so this will often include things like you're going to make sulfur and oxygen, you're going to make this particular sulfur oxide compound. For metal and non-metal, here we're going to make an ionic compound. And that changes things a little bit because ionic compounds are neutral overall, but are composed of charged particles. And we can use the charge to figure out what the formula would be. So these are a little more straightforward. So here, let's assume we mix sodium and chlorine. So we're going to make sodium chloride and we know from the charge that sodium forms in the, in the ionic state, in the ion state, and the charge that chloride forms in the ion state, that the formula of this is going to be NaCl. We know that this forms a plus one charge and a minus one charge and therefore we have one of each, uh, or a ratio of one to one. Now for our states of matter on this, the sodium will usually actually be in the liquid state but we can go with solid which on the periodic table, either one would work. Gaseous chlorine, we need a 2 there, a 1, and a 2, and we would end up with solid sodium chloride. Okay, so when you're mixing elements and elements, we're going to end up with a synthesis reaction. Now, if we do an element and a compound, you're probably looking at single replacement. The lone exception to that that we're going to look at at the introductory level is combustion where your element is oxygen and your compound is a hydrocarbon. Okay? So in that case, we would make CO2 gas and steam or water, which could eventually turn into the liquid form. But for everything else, we're looking at a single replacement. However, there are still levels to different types of single replacement. So if we're looking at a metal element plus an ionic compound, a salt, that's going to that's gonna involve one way to predict the products. If we're looking at a metal and an acid, that's going to be kind of the same thing, but with a little slight twist. If we're looking at halogen plus a salt, that's going to come out a little differently. So let's say we're looking at a metal, zinc metal, and let's say we're mixing that with copper two chloride. So now we're taking this place in, in water. So the solid zinc, of course, is not going to dissolve, but the copper two chloride will and we would check our activity series. So we need to know if this reaction will happen or not. So in all of these single replacement reactions, one will happen, one will not. And there's a lot of good analogies you can use to kind of like come up with a simple methodology of will it happen or not. Zinc is the more reactive element of the two. It's going to end up in the compound form. So in this particular case, we're going to turn zinc and copper two chloride into zinc chloride copper, this is soluble, so aqueous, and that would be the solid form, and we balance there as well. Okay. Now a metal plus an acid, is going to come out similarly, and this one will also react on the activity series, zinc is further left than hydrogen, uh, but now we're going to form hydrogen gas. So the zinc will displace the hydrogen almost as if it were a metal. But remember that hydrogen is diatomic, of course, and we end up with zinc chloride, which will be dissolved in the water, and we would need two of these to get that reaction to go. However, there is also one other thing where there are some metals that are so reactive that alkali 
and some of the alkaline will follow this process, but they'll displace hydrogen from water as well. So when we react sodium metal and water, we're gonna produce hydrogen gas as from before. And then this might not make sense to someone who's new to chemistry, but the sodium is displacing the hydrogen, but it's not displacing two hydrogens from here, it's displacing one H plus, and there's a hydroxide remaining. And so it ends up sodium hydroxide, not sodium oxide. Dissolve, we would have a two, a two, and a two. Okay, so there are these kind of, these you can think of as doing a single replacement, but we're gonna produce hydrogen gas. And then lastly, we have halogens plus salt. So if we're looking at chlorine gas being bubbled through sodium bromide, so again, we're taking place in water, so we're gonna have the chlorine gas. We could call it aqueous, but gas is probably more appropriate. Sodium bromide is aqueous, and when that reaction is gonna happen, we're gonna produce sodium chloride plus bromine liquid. So in this reaction, what we have happening is, is that the halogen is displacing the halide from the compound. So up here, we have the zinc displacing the copper. So the cation was being traded out for the new metal. When you have a non-metal added to a salt, it's going to displace the anion, or potentially displace the anion. Okay, so, so A and C are a good contrast. Be wary of this, that you don't end up trying to knock chlorine in and having chlorine bond with bromine. That's not actually what happens. Okay, so if you have an element of compound, single replacement is probably what you're looking for unless it's combustion, but combustion is pretty easy to tell apart from single replacement. That's not generally an issue. Now, if you have two compounds added together, you're probably looking at double replacement. Okay, so if we're looking at a salt and a salt, let's say we're looking at barium chloride, Solution mixed with sodium sulfate solution. So we're going to form barium sulfate. And I'm out of room here, so I'm going to continue this on down here plus sodium chloride. Like that. Okay, so there's our double replacement reaction. We form the precipitate when we do that. Um, you can also do an acid base reaction. A double replacement, but the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion are going to combine to form the water. That's a really good balancing tip: is that if you if you balance the number of hydrogens, hydroxides, and water molecules, a neutralization reaction, which is a specific type of double replacement, will automatically balance everything else that's in there. And then the one exception that that will catch a lot of people off guard is that if you add something with oxygen to water, that's not going to be a double replacement. This is going to be a synthesis reaction. And if the, if the thing here is a metal, when I say metal, something like sodium oxide. Okay, so if I'm taking sodium oxide and adding it to water, I'm gonna make a base. If, on the other hand, I have a non-metal, like sulfur dioxide, and I add that to water, I'm gonna make an acid. Now, that's going to be a lot more infrequent probably in your class than this one is. This is going to be very common. Uh, so if you see a compound in a compound, you're probably looking at double replacement. But if you run into this, what will probably happen for a lot of high school students is you'll look and you'll say, oh, I'll switch the oxygens out. And then you realize that doesn't make any sense because those just stay the same at that point. And when you get to that point, realize that that's the exception for compound and compound where you're looking at a synthesis reaction. And then from there, you're either going to make a hydroxide or an acid depending on whether you have a non-metal or a metal to start with the oxygen. Okay, and if you just start with a compound, that's gonna be a decomposition. So really, we're just starting with one thing. If you just start with one element, there's not really anything that can happen. 
For decomposition, you can start with binary compounds. So binary, when I say binary, what I mean is you're starting with just two elements. So I'm starting with just lithium bromide. So I'm going to run electricity through lithium bromide. So in order for that, I need to melt it first. And I'm going to end up producing lithium metal, which would start in the liquid state, um, probably. And bromine probably start in the gaseous state, to be honest. But let's put it in liquid. Let's actually go ahead and put this in solid on the crack table. So in order to run electricity on something, you would have to melt it first. The ions are capable of conducting charge. But what's important here is that if you have a binary compound, you're going to start with two elements. You're going to decompose them into the elements. Watch out for diatomics, but other than that, it's a very straightforward reaction. If you start with a ternary compound, there's a whole bunch of different things that you can start with. And what you want to do with these is you want to look for a gas that would form. So if I start with a carbonate, and I start with magnesium carbonate, you want to ask yourself, what gas do I see embedded in this compound that would be produced from that? In that case, you're looking at carbon dioxide gas. Okay, but really in any of these, there's some gas present. In hydroxides, it's steam. In chlorates, it's oxygen. And in acids, it's going to be steam. So, so in all these situations, there's some kind of gas, whether it's O2, steam, or CO2, that you're looking for to form. A lot of people instead want to kind of chop this in half, and that's not what actually happens when you heat that. You actually end up producing this and this, which are, which is what you form, I, I guess. It's more stable, but, but really that's just, when you look at the evidence of what happens in the reaction, you're always forming some type of gas from it. So that's how you want to kind of treat that, is you want to look and say, okay, this is decomposition. What's one of the gases I see embedded in this? Uh, and then from there, you can go ahead and balance the rest. Okay, so if we go through then, and we take a look, here we have element plus element. That's going to be a synthesis. Let's just write that in here. So let's just label them as. So that's a synthesis reaction. I'm going to end up producing sodium bromide. Here I have compound plus compound. Not going to be something with oxygen. I've got a polyatomic ion and a chloride. So that's going to be double replacement. Okay, in that case, I'm going to make calcium carbonate sodium chloride. MgCO3, we just saw, that's decomposition. It's a single thing. It's just a compound by itself. It's going to make magnesium oxide and carbon dioxide gas. Uh, KOH, it's just one thing. It's got to be decomposition. So just one compound. I'm looking for a gas. I'm not seeing it. Oh wait, it's going to be steam. So from there, I'm going to form potassium oxide. Uh, water and SO2, this is compound plus compound, so, but it's the one where it's oxygen plus something with oxygen. It's a water plus something with oxygen, and so therefore I'm going to be making an acid, H2SO3. Zinc plus copper 2 bromide, I'm looking at element plus compound. It's a, it's a metallic element, and so therefore I'm going to end up producing the zinc in the copper trading places. Uh, some of the carbon hydrogen is going to be burning, it's going to be combustion, so I'm going to produce CO2 and water. And the last one here, I've got compound plus compound, so therefore I'm looking at a double replacement. And we end up forming silver chloride precipitate and sodium nitrate. So, that's not everything, there's states of matter, there's what you're going to form, but looking at whether you have elements or compounds, what kind, when you need to look at whether you have uh, three things in a compound or, or two things in a compound, I don't know if we have examples of binary decomposition, whether you need to look at whether you have metals or non-metals, all of those factors are going to start to come into play. So you want to start by looking at what do I have in terms of elements and compounds, and it will kind of give you a starting point to kind of get up to that higher level of being able to predict products.